Hello from Melbourne and I, and it's lovely to see you all. This morning we're going to look at the story of Joshua and the Battle of Jericho. As Kim alluded to a hundred years ago today, World War I ended and it's known as Remembrance Day. So many lives lost and changed forever. Communities, the landscape of Australia. And today is a time to stop, reflect and remember. My message this morning is called Don't Stop Short. Keep going, keep moving forward, take a step, be people of faith, be people of courage. <laughs> Before I pray, I just want to reflect on this psalm, Psalm 37, verses 3 to 5, it'll be up on the screen there. May this be an encouragement to us here this morning. Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and enjoy safe pasture. Take delight in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust in him and he will do this. Let us be people who trust and commit our way to the Lord. Let's pray. Father God, I thank you that we can just pause now here in this place. And sing songs of praise. Worship you and honour you. This morning, Lord, as we consider these thoughts before us, help us to continue to be people of faith and courage. At times we don't know what the future holds, but Lord, we trust in you. And we take a step and we move forward. Father God, inspire us today. As we be your people of hope and faith here in this community as we care for one another, as we reach out beyond these walls with the love and hope of Christ, as we be your hands and feet, offering your eternal message. In Jesus' name, Amen. So let's come and look at Joshua. Today in the city of Jericho, and those walls came tumbling it down. It may be a familiar story, maybe one of Sunday school, maybe not. But it's the book of Joshua is the sixth book of the Old Testament. I'm going to read a, a portion of that from chapter 6, verses 1 to 5. It will be up on the screen there for you. Now the gates of Jericho were securely barred because of the Israelites. No one went out and no one came in. Then the Lord said to Joshua, See, I have delivered Jericho into your hands, along with its king, and fighting men. I find that very interesting because nothing's happened yet. And they've already won. But let us be encouraged today that God sees the end result. I've delivered it. The, the means to your hands, God said. And then he gives some instructions. In verse 3, march around the city once with all the armed men. Do this for six days. Have seven priests carry trumpets of ram's horn in front of the ark. On the seventh day, march around the city seven times with the priests blowing the trumpets. When you hear the, them sound a long blast on the trumpet, have the whole army give a loud shout, and then the wall of the city will collapse, and the army will go up, everyone straight in. Seems pretty straightforward, doesn't it? March around for six days, then on the seventh day, march around seven times and blow trumpets and the walls will come down. That's going to be effective, isn't it? <laughs> Continuing on, verse 14 of Joshua 6. So on the second day, they marched around the city once and returned to the camp. They did this for six days. On the seventh day, they got up at daybreak and marched around the city seven times in the same manner. Except on that day, they circled the city seven times. The seventh time around, when the priest sounded the trumpet blast, Joshua commanded the army, Shout, for the Lord has given you this city. And victory was theirs.
I think in life sometimes our perspective gets blocked. Sometimes the way ahead doesn't seem clear, it's confusing, we lose hope, what's God up to, we've been praying, we've been believing for this certain thing and nothing happens, no doors open, more doors shut and so we go, Lord, well, well, what are you up to? We have Joshua and all these men marching around this walled city. No doubt it seemed impossible to conquer. All they were doing was marching around. Commentators and theologians talk about how thick these walls were. They used to have chariot races on top of them. So that's not going to be a very narrow wall, is it? If you think of a chariot and horses and, and a couple of them side by side racing around the top of a walled city. This wall would be hard to break. This was a fortified city. No one went in and no one went out. We need to understand is that we must not limit God. When things look impossible, when things seem hard, let us not limit God. Sometimes what God says to us seems unreal. I've given you this city. March around it and the walls will come down. They had not taken one step. Let us understand God's perspective. And no, it may not look like what we expected, but the victory is ours. There may be wall things in your life that need to come down. There may be things that we need to break through. Maybe there's sickness or relationships or a work situation or financial pressure and God needs to break through those walls. My encouragement for us this morning is to be obedient with what we know and focus on what we need to do because God hasn't forgotten me and God hasn't forgotten you. They kept marching for six days even when there was no results. Sometimes in life, sometimes in our Christian walk, the progress is not obvious to those around us. But that doesn't mean that God has stopped working. That doesn't mean that we've lost hope or we've lost faith. We're just being obedient with what we know and taking a step and doing the things he's called us to do. Be obedient in what he's asked us to do. Keep praying and believing. Keep marching around. Don't stop. Keep walking, even when the results aren't obvious. Because the results are coming. Friends, it's seen in the ground. At the end of the day, God will bring a harvest. At the end of the day, God's not going to say up on the screen there, well done. Well done, good and successful servant, but well done, good and faithful servant, because we've been faithful with what he's given us to do. I read it took about an hour or so to walk around the city of Jericho. There were hundreds of men Marching around. Now if I was God, on the third or fourth or first or second day, I would have, I would have let like one or two bricks fall out to give them a bit of hope, amen? Just something. Here we go again, up and marching around. And maybe a few rocks falling. At least to give them something, some, some hope. But nothing. Maybe God was doing a deeper work in them and a deeper work in us as we journey through life. I think God wants to see our obedience and God wants to see our faithfulness and God wants to see us use what He's given us to do. He wants to see your faithfulness in what you've been asked to do. So let us trust Him and serve Him. Even when it's confusing, God wants us to focus less on the outcome and more focus on being his people of faith and obedience and following him 
The outcome is God's responsibility. And the obedience is mine and the obedience is yours. Here in this place. Here in this community that He has placed us all. Christmas is appearing in our shopping centres. I'm sure I heard a Christmas carol the other day. <laughs> Decorations are going up. Things are happening. I often reflect on Mary this time of year as it fast approaches. She understood this principle of obedience. Even when things seemed a little bit confusing. Even when things seemed out, out of the ordinary. She believed and trusted and obeyed God that what He had told her would happen. That she would give birth to Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Fear not, Mary. Don't stress. All will be as God had said. She was obedient to what she knew. It's okay, Mary. But I was going to marry Joseph. Yes, marry Joseph. I'm a virgin, but... Be obedient with what we know. Don't stop moving forward. Don't stop having your eyes fixed on Jesus. How is the alphabet different on Christmas Day from any other day? There's no L. <laughs> Amerix, I know. Thought you'd enjoy that. The laughter is definite, yes. You can use that one on Christmas Day. So God tells Joshua the plan. And he goes and shares it to the people. This is how it's going to be. It's Joshua chapter 6, 6 to 10, up on the screen there for you. So Joshua called together the priests and said, Take up the ark of the Lord's covenant, and assign seven priests to walk in front of it, each carrying a ram's horn. Then give the orders to the people, march around the town, and the ark men will lead the way in front of the ark of the Lord. After Joshua spoke to the people, the seven priests with ram's horns started marching in the presence of the Lord, blowing the horns as they marched, and the ark of the Lord's covenant followed behind them. Some of the armed men marched in front of the priests with the horns, and some behind the ark, with the priests continually blowing the horns. There's lots of noise going on. Do not shout. Do not even talk. Joshua commanded, not a single word from any of you until I tell you to shout, then shout. It's interesting, Joshua didn't tell them how long they would be marching. Just to go and march. The horns will be blowing, but don't speak to each other. He needed them to have faith. He needed them to be committed. He needed them to get up every day and go, okay, God's got this in hand. We believe Joshua. We believe we'll have victory. So up we get and off we march. God calls us to get up and faithfully serve Him daily. Let us be creative. Let us be kind. Let us be generous. Let us be people who are faithful. Let us be obedient. Let us be, let us be committed to those around us. Let us continue to share the great hope of Jesus Christ who came to save. Just imagine for a minute one of Joshua's army, one of the men in his army coming home. His wife's waiting for him. So tell me, dear, how was your day? How did it go? What happened? Who did you fight? What did you do? Uh, we marched around the city. <laughs> yes, and... Then we came home. Right. Okay. Day two. Day three. Day four. Yep, just marched around the city. I'm home again. How many days they did not know. But they faithfully obeyed and faithfully marched because they knew their God would not fail them. And He was in control. 
And he had shown them time and time again through their history, through their miracles, through their stories, that he was a God who had not let them down. Day seven is coming and the walls will be broken down. Trust in him with the outcome. Be committed to what we know he's called us to do. Let us keep moving forward. Don't give up. Don't stop on day six. One day away from victory. Let us not stop on six. How sad if we bailed out and the victory is just around the corner. Just up ahead. You only have to through, get through today. And then tomorrow victory will be ours. Let's not get distracted by negative voices. But enjoy the journey because we don't march or walk alone. We do it together. We take a step together. We move forward together, remembering God's faithfulness, His provision. His hand of blessing upon us as His faithful people. Joshua 6, verse 20. When the trumpet sounded, the army shouted. But at the sound of the trumpets, when the men gave a loud shout, the walls collapsed, so everyone charged in. Straight in, and they took the city. Victory was theirs, faithfully following God's word and his plan to them. Faithfully following. Don't stop on six. Keep going, take another step, be obedient and faithful as you move forward. I saw this quote the other day as I finished this morning. It said, hope is the only thing stronger than fear. Hope is the only thing stronger than fear. Joshua and his men trusted in the Lord. They had hope that God will give them the victory. Have hope this week that God will give you the victory, that God will open that door, that He will be your answer as you faithfully and obediently serve Him. Don't stop. Take a step. In Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Let us pray. Father God, our hope is in you. Our faith is in you. When it looks scary, when it looks confusing, when it's fearful, Lord, we trust in you. Thank you that your word continues to come faithfully to us. Open doors of opportunity here in this place, we pray. As we step out beyond these walls, as we be an encouragement to one another, thank you, Lord, that you hear our prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you.